So with the Fate Rec Room event coming to a close over on the NA version of the game, I'm sure myself and pretty much everybody else that's playing the NA version of the game was expecting Summer 4 to come back around, you know, Berserker Musashi would go on raid up, maybe throw a couple multis at her, because she is going to be incredibly good when it comes to the Castoria meta. However, we are feeling the woes of DW's game design, even though Lysengal has taken over, I guess we're still feeling the quote-unquote dead weeks that DW put in the game for some unknown reason. Please, Master Lysengal, come and save us from this dead week. However, I did not get an opportunity to talk about Lakshmi Bai, so I'm kind of glad we have this extra day because I felt like I was in a position where I had to talk about Sherlock or Lakshmi Bai, and I wanted to talk about both of them. So I'm kind of glad I get this extra day because Lakshmi Bai is one of those divisive servants that you either think she's pretty good or decent, borderline usable, or you think she's complete hot dog water. And although she's pretty cute, not very good. So we're going to talk about her in today's video and kind of go through this debate that people have with Lakshmi Bai. A lot of it centralizes around the fact that she can't loop. Well, she can loop, but then again, she can't. But really, she can if you use this team comp. But then again, she really can't loop when it matters. And that's kind of the ongoing debate with this servant in regards to her viability because she came out during the Scotty meta and that's when looping really became a determining factor of how good a servant was if they couldn't loop they weren't viable and it doesn't matter which side of the fence you stand on for a Lakshmi by and how hard you want to try to make her loop the fact remained that she couldn't really compete with people like Edmund Dantes, Lancelot, Parvati, Voyager when he came out and now most recently on the JP version of the game the Okita Alter Saber servant that came out for their summer event that seems to be the go-to premium AoE quick Saber looping person, right? So join me in today's video as we dive into Lakshmi Bai, because at the very least, she is a John face, which means she's automatically cute. Real quick though, if you enjoy daily FGO content, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And tomorrow, May 21st at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on my Twitch, I'm gonna be hosting a Master Duel tournament where the winner will walk away with a $100 cash prize and second place will walk away with a $50 cash prize. If you would like to sign up, don't worry, there are last minute signups. You can literally pull up at 4.50 tomorrow and I will allow you into the tournament because I would like to get as many people in here as possible because come on, we're playing for money. So let's try to get as many people in here as possible. Let's make this a real entertaining thing. Get your butt in here, join the Discord, DM me your deck, DM me the side deck, all that good stuff. Side deck, if any, side deck, not mandatory but highly recommended and i'll see you guys tomorrow at 5 p.m eastern standard time now with that being said let's talk about something more than just some cardboard let's talk about a virtual png my girl locks me by starting off with her hits and she's definitely got an interesting thing going for her she's rocking a double quick double buster deck meaning she only has the one arts card but that also means that her natural np gain is extremely high at 1.01 percent which is already off to a very good start because Having very high NP gain like that means that she should be primed to do some looping. Although the only problem is that she has a quick NP with only four hits. And ideally, if you're going to be looping with quick servants, you're going to be wanting to push that six, seven, eight hits on the NP because they need those hits and those overkill more than an art servant does because their natural quick card NP gain is lower than the art servants. That's why an art servant can get away with like a three, four hit NP and still loop. But quick servants, you really want to see them push those high hits. However, the fact that her natural NP gain is so high does allow her with the proper support to get away with looping, but that's not the only problem she has. As we'll talk about later, her damage is really something that is holding her back as she does not hit very hard. And it makes her very, very hard to get those overkills, which are essential to looping her NP. But we'll talk about that when we get to her NP and some things that I think they could do if they buffed her to kind of fix those problems. But because she's rocking that double quick, double buster deck, and she is an AoE quick servant that, spoiler alert, is going to be buffing the entire party's crit star generation rate, he will basically always guarantee that there are stars in rotation, so she can actually do some pretty good buster crit, some very strong quick crits if you're running Scotty, as Scotty gives you 100% quick crit damage. And if you can snag a hit on that arts card, you're going to refund basically your entire NP, because even though it's only got two hits, her NP gain is so absurdly high that a crit on that arts card right there is going to mean a metric butt ton of your NP coming back. They also did give her that five hit extra attack, which if you're not in the know, the five hit extra attack is the omnipotent godly strongest card in the game as it gens 
stars NP and does big boy damage. However, in this case, where I normally would say, oh, but it can't crit, so it's not as good, because her natural NP gain is actually so high and her natural star gen at 10% is pretty decent, you can actually get some mileage out of her extra attack in Brave Chain. So you know what? We already got a godly servant working right here. <laughs> now let's go ahead and start moving on to her skills because the skills of Lakshmi Bai are actually pretty good. Starting off with one of the stronger charismas in the game, she's going to be giving the entire party 20% attack for three turns, buffing their star gen by 50% for three turns, and their crit damage by 50% for three turns, and it stays on a low five turn cooldown. Usually when charismas like this are this strong, they are put on like six, seven turn cooldowns, but because they put in those 60% chances, they were actually able to get away with lowering the cooldown. Now you may be saying, hey man, ZTL, why are you like not upset that these are 60% chances? Well, that's because Lakshmi Bai actually has something on her third skill that we'll get to that actually allows her to pretty much guarantee you'll get these buffs. And so in practice, they put these weird 60% chances in here to get away with lowering the cooldown, but then it gave her a way to guarantee these buffs to the entire party, meaning this is a very, very strong charisma that is not only giving a solid attack buff to the entire party, giving them insane crit damage and allowing the entire party to pretty much fund their own stars for three turns on a five turn cooldown, meaning there's only like two turns where this is down. And this in and of itself brings a lot of value to the entire party just because of how insanely strong this is for the offensive pressure that your party can now put on the opponent. So it's a very, very strong opening charisma, although it kind of gets a little lackluster from here on the second skill because the second skill gives one ally invincibility. That's pretty good. And it has the same gimmick of 60% chances on two different buffs. Now, these buffs aren't bad. It's a 2k heal every turn for three turns and then 2000 damage cut for three hits that also last for three turns. So a pretty good defensive skill that she's offering somebody, but really the main thing you're going to be using here is you're going to be using it for that invincibility. And then it'll just be kind of nice that they recovered 2000 HP and they also have really, really strong damage cut because the damage cut is essentially going to allow them to take advantage of the healing. That servant shouldn't take too much damage and should overall be healing more than they're taking. But after the first skill, it's not nearly as crazy. Still very nice that the targeted invincibility is not really tied down to anything. You know, you don't have to rely on like a 60% chance for that. So even if your third skill is down or something and you can't get the guaranteed 60%, you get the most important effect and that is targeting somebody and guaranteed to keep them alive. However, this leads us into her final third skill, which gives herself a guts that lasts for three turns and has a pretty chunky revive HP at 3k. And this is actually where she guarantees the buffs for the entire party because she buffs the entire party's buff success rate by 40% for three turns. And if we do some quick maths, a 40% buff success rate plus a 60% chance means she buffs that up to a 100% chance to give herself those skills. So very strong for herself, but also if you want to pair her with Imperial Privilege characters like say Nero, who if you don't know, Imperial Privilege is basically a 60% chance for a massive attack and defense buff and the downside is well that it's a 60 percent chance but if you pair with like lakshmi by you can actually guarantee those buffs it's why ozymandias is also really really good for guaranteeing people's imperial privileges because imperial privilege is such a strong skill the only cost for this style of gameplay is that she reduces her own debuff resistance by 20 percent for three turns which is kind of a shame because lakshmi by actually has really high natural debuff resistance she has both 20% from magic resistance and 20% from goddess essence, meaning normally she's going to be rocking 40% debuff resistance, meaning it's basically a coin flip to resist any debuff coming her way, which is really strong. And the fact that you have to cut that from a near coin flip chance to a one in five chance is a little crusty, but still worth to facilitate her style of gameplay with how strong her first skill is and the nice little perks you can get from the second skill. The skill is also really nice for giving herself a gut, so it's not as imperative to use the invincibility on herself. You can throw that invincibility on somebody else because she has the guts that can also keep herself alive. So it is just very, very nice. When you move to her NP though, it's a little lackluster. It's just AoE again, four hits, doesn't do a lot of damage. She removes the enemy's offensive buffs, which is nice because it's going to help to keep your party alive by removing things like their attack buffs, the crit damage buff that enemies especially like to stack right now. You can remove the enemy's pierce invincibility, then give your own allies invincibility so they can actually stay safe. 
And then on Overcharge, she's reducing the enemy's critical attack chance by 20 to 40 percent for three turns, depending on Overcharge. So really making sure you're not just going to get obliterated by enemy crits or something. It's just the problem is that she really doesn't do a lot of damage. If you look at her damage, it is absolute hot dog water. It is not very good at all. So while it is possible to get her to loop, you're really going to want to shoot for higher NP copies, which is a lot of investment for a server that you know a better version is going to be coming out in Saber Okita Alter in like a year and a half. And so it's like, unless you're a huge John simp, it's really not worth the trouble of going through to try to make this servant work if you want to use her as a looper. Now, if you want to use her as like a secondary DPS, she shows a lot of potential for that because she can do pretty good crit damage. She brings some really good utility to the party, especially if you want to use somebody that has Imperial Privilege. The most notable servant I can think of that really has some decent synergy with Lakshmi Bai would be Wu Zedian as they both have quick NPs and they both uh, kind of buff each other with things that each other would want. Wu Zedian also just got a buff on the JP version of the game that kind of helps out with that. Wu gives Lakshmi Bai over here also a quick buff, which is also really nice because that's one thing that Lakshmi Bai is missing is that she only has the one attack buff for herself, which kind of tells me that when DW is designing this servant, they didn't want her to be the primary DPS. They wanted her to be more of a support type servant. Otherwise, they would have given her multiple buff types to gas up her damage, because if you don't know, multiple buff types actually multiply into each other and they are not additive. So say in this uh, hypothetical team composition of Wu Zedian plus Lakshmi Bai, the attack buff that Lakshmi Bai gets for herself and the quick buff that Wu Zedian is going to give her are going to multiply into each other to give her more damage. A fix I think that they could really do to help out Lakshmi Bai a lot would just be to buff her NP and give her some type of special damage mod. I don't really know what they would do for the special damage mod because I know her lore, she's like this very central rebellion figure for India, but I don't really know who they're going to give her a special damage mod against that would be broad enough that it would actually make sense in Fate. If you guys can think of a special damage mod that'd be really good for her, let me know in the comments down below. Or they could give her more utility and give her like removes all enemy buffs whenever she attacks procs first would be really, really nice if they would do something like that. The NP buff would also buff its damage so she's not hitting like a complete wet paper towel, but we'll have to see what they do going forward because I think her skills are fine. It's just really the problem comes from the NP and it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. So you can't really take advantage of that insanely high natural NP gain. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I know this video is a bit of a longer one, but I really do like Lakshmi Bai. Hopefully Summer 4 drops soon because, you know, I am kind of itching to summon for a uh, Berserker Musashi over there. Maybe I can't get Saber Musashi, but maybe that means Berserker Musashi is guaranteed for me. So let's see about that one. Hope you guys are also looking forward to doing some rolls on that. Don't forget to sign up for the tournament that is going to be tomorrow, May 21st. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on the Twitch, link down in the description down below. I also stream every weekday over on my Twitch if you want extra content. But if you're still absolutely starving for content, you can click that join button to become a channel member where I upload videos exclusively for channel members. And finally, if you want to support the channel for free, you can download LD Emulator down in the description down below. It is just a good way to play mobile games on your PC, laptop, or what have you. And I personally believe in the product so much that both my NA and JP accounts are on LD emulator and I use them when I stream and whatnot. So, you know, I do believe in the product. You know, I put my own accounts on the line and I haven't been burned since. So with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace. Late guys.